Hello, BookTube. Hello, BookTube. <laughs> In response to your nonstop emails and text messages, this video features not only Deb, but Frida. <laughs> However, despite the fact that the video has Deb and Frida, remember, eyes on the prize. I'm still the cute one. <laughs> but I thought this video, I have two, two Deb videos. I don't know if Frida will stick around for them, but I have two Deb videos. The first one is Old Books with Deb. Because I recently went back to, oh, hello, oh, hello. I recently went back to the Brattle uh, and got a, a handful of books, and I want to show them to you. Uh, Deb hasn't seen them, so I want to show them to you in front of her, and we'll gabble a bit, like old folks do. <laughs> the first one is this, The Trials of Rumpole, uh, which you might think, don't you have all of Rumpole, and I do. But this, these Penguin trade paperbacks have Christopher Green cover illustrations. I don't know if you can see that. That is a, an exhibit gun with a tag on it, a mantelpiece clock, and the Oxford Book of English Verse, the Quiller Coach Edition, please. <laughs> I just think they're lovely. And, I, and Penguin issued all of the, the Rumpole novels with Christopher Green covers. I just have a handful of them because I just can't find them. And so every time I see one, I grab it. And uh, this one has some great stuff in it, including it ends with Rumpel and the Age for Retirement, where he, uh, he loses a case and his, his client is very upset because in prison his client will not be able to have two fresh shirts a day. And he views that not as a luxury, but as a necessity. And, and out of anger, he says to Rumpel, you know what you should do, you should retire. And Rumpel starts to think, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I'm getting past it. And rumor starts to spread around the old Bailey that he is going to retire, but of course he's not. <laughs> and when they give him a retirement party, they throw him a party and they give him a mantelpiece clock. And he claims the clock, but then he, he says, I'm having too much fun to quit. <laughs> we little too close to home. <laughs> yes. I just, I just read this Christmas, the Rumpel's Christmas Oh, the little special thing? Yeah, the little special thing. Did you thing. like it? Have I you did. ever read any other Rumpel? I have not, but I, I will be. One says, again, as usual, the sound of something being furiously destroyed in the background is my puppy. Who's getting on to not being a puppy anymore, right? I mean, it's a sandal yeah. of mine. She's, she's getting on not being a puppy anymore. She's still acting like one. But she's not going to be a puppy forever, <laughs> to, to excuse it. <laughs> but it's, uh, in, in Rumpel in The Age for Retirement, he's, he's starting to feel like maybe it's time. And he's quoting uh, Ulysses by Tennyson. He's, he's quoting <laughs> an aged king, meet these barren crags, matched with an aged wife, I meet and dole unequal laws unto a savage race that horn and sleep and feed and know not me. <laughs> Uh, but uh, when it comes to it, he can't bring himself to retire. <laughs> uh, and then the next one is a Penguin Classic. And it's a Penguin Classic I didn't have. It's the Scarlet and the, and the Black, the Red and the Black by Stendhal. Very nice. And I didn't have it. I have a, a ratty old mass market that was falling apart. And Le Rouge and Le Noir, I love this novel, the story of Julian Sorrel, gorgeous Julian Sorrel, a hayseed from the, from the provinces who wants to make it. Paris, in the City of Lights. Uh -huh. Frida. <laughs> you can't... Uh, you, oh, God helps. You can't eat plastic, little girl. I'll be pulling out of your innards for the next three days. If you could just calm yeah. down, that would be great. There. Just calm down. We're trying to make a video. There you She's go. Good girl. She's been waiting for this so that she could act up. She was nice have you ever read just the red and the black? I have not. Such a good story. The story of Julian Sorrel making it in the big city. And of course he, he does whatever he can and becomes corrupted. And the whole thing. It's a no, no, no plastic. God, I can't even make a 20 minute video. Uh, he becomes corrupted by the city, and that that gimmick allows Stendhal to just lavish irony on everything. It's just it's a cuttingly socially sarcastic novel. I highly recommend it. He wrote it at a shot, and critics didn't know what to make of it. But as the uh, the in the introduction to this volume, the person who writes the introduction says, "Good stories don't care about their the reception of their day," and that's entirely right. The novel is a joy to read. By uh, 
uh, people have pointed out that, that Stendhal's sarcasm, his social, uh, the biting irony of it, uh, is very much like Jane Austen. Uh, and that's true. It is. Uh, the, the Red and the Black is such a great book. And now I have a Penguin Classic of it, which I didn't have. And then the next one, <laughs> the next one is something I reviewed when it came out and then got rid of it. I don't have the advanced copy that I had. I don't have the hardcover. I don't have the paperback. And the, so when I saw the paperback of the Brattle, I had to get it. It's, it's, it's the Reagan Diaries. Ronald Reagan kept a little diary um, in, his, in his neat little schoolboy handwriting for, for years and years, for the whole time that he was in office. Uh, and this is a, a compilation of that with light annotation. Uh, and I read it and reviewed it when it first came out. What's the, what's the date on that thing? 2004? No, no, no. I think it's around 2010. Uh, 2007. 2007. So the very first year that Open Letters Monthly existed. Uh, and I wrote a long review of it called President Peeps. Uh, and loved it. I think it's a fascinating insight into, into Reagan. Uh, and uh, it's also interesting because he, he, he chose... The, the editor chose to leave in the deeply personal stuff. The, the stuff where if he thought his kids were being mean to him, he would, he would confide it in his diary, and that's not left out. That stuff is left in. So it's a remarkable portrait that, that comes out. Uh, so I had to get it when I saw it at the Brattle. And then uh, <laughs> the next one is something you only see at the Brattle. <laughs> it's, it is a... The two-volume autobiography of Andrew White. Two volumes. So I will ask the question, <laughs> from, who was Andrew White? These were printed in, uh, over a century ago. Uh, Andrew White was a senator from New York who came to Albany, I think, uh, when Lincoln was president. He knew personally every president from Lincoln to Theodore Roosevelt, and I think he knew... He knew, he knew well enough to nod and talk to Taft and Wilson as well. And he didn't just know them, he worked for them. Uh, as he was a senator forever. He was also, I think, president of Cornell in like his spare time. But most of his time, he was trusted by one president after another. Uh, Harrison, Arthur, Grant. Knew Grant really well. Uh, Roosevelt himself. And he was trusted by one president after another to be emissary to various countries, to be the head the diplomatic legations to various countries, including uh, Germany, where he spent a lot of time. Uh, and I think, I think he was in Germany when President McKinley was assassinated, who he knew really well. Uh, and also legate to St. Petersburg, to Russia, where he spent an enormous amount of time, got to know Tolstoy really well. Uh, the, I think, if I remember correctly, in his, in his, maybe it's not in this book, maybe in some other book, but uh, he wrote a long, almost book-length set of his recollections of Tolstoy going on country walks with him, talking about literature with him, that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, the whole time, so that he was in public life that whole time, and he kept meticulous notes that whole time, vast notebooks of receipts and days and times and whatnot. The whole time, just assuming that when the time came, he would write his autobiography, and then he did. He wrote an enormous autobiography. And I don't know if you, <laughs> if you could probably tell from the picture uh, you'll probably be able to tell from the picture what I'm going to tell you about the book is that it is crashingly dull. <laughs> Just brutally dull. Even if you're interested in, uh, in 19th century Brit American politics, it's still crushingly dull. <laughs> and you might think, well, if you know that already, but why did you get the two-volume autobiography of, of, of Senator White? And the reason why is because, in, in, as I mentioned on this channel, in 2018, I am writing a gigantic biography of William Howard Taft. Uh, and that, a large part of that is, is going to be about what made Taft. Wait, did you just say you are writing a biography? I am writing a gigantic biography of William Howard Taft in 2018. You have not told me this before. Well, it's not particularly interesting. <laughs> are, are you going to enjoy writing that scene about where he gets stuck in the bathtub? He never got stuck <laughs> in a bathtub. I'm going to enjoy puncturing that scene, but I'm not going to write it because it never happened. But, uh, as I was saying, I want to capture the, the political atmosphere of when Taft was a young man, 
when he what what was the what were the politics in the air in the writing in the world who were the people that he knew when he was getting into politics when he was become was coming closer and closer to a political world that he never really wanted to enter who were the people and that book is entirely that world it is it is virtually a mimeograph of that world it's just not interesting <laughs> it's, a, it's going to be invaluable so i'm so glad that i found it and you know the brattle bookshop here in Boston, the only place where you can go and just yeah. find it, or you can just find something like this. In in most used bookstores, this would be on the counter behind the desk, and it would be about outrageously overpriced, and the owner would only know that it was really old. They wouldn't, at the oh, Brattle. Here's, here's another picture of him. <laughs> there he is as an older man. Uh, at the Brattle, these things were at the outside carts. They're just. Wow. So you can just, you can just grab them. Uh, so, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it? Those are, well, we're at 11 minutes. I'm trying not to make half-hour videos. No, <laughs> so, no, I'm just surprised that you left the brattle with only five books. Well, there's a reason for that. I like to shop, as you know, I like to shop only outside. Right. At the, at the bargain carts. And I was right. freezing my giblets off. Oh. So okay. I, so I, I... Browsed out there as long as I could, and then I couldn't take it anymore. I I, I stopped. <laughs> and as your fans know, I need to read twenty classics this year, so maybe this will be one oh, of them. Oh, the red and the black—you can't go wrong. Uh, you can't go wrong. It's so good, and I can load you with a copy because I, uh, I I own it. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah, David owns a copy of every book in the world. I do. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's it. That's old books with Deb. <laughs> and we're going to sign off, and then we'll do new books with Deb. <laughs> okay. 